Hey there, uh, I want to talk, I'm on my way to go get my sleep machine, so that's cool. I want to talk, you can see how the not sleeping well is taking a toll on my face. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I want to talk about the difference between good works and dead works. Uh, my understanding of it. Um, first, let's define dead works. Dead works are works that you do to try to satisfy your conscience apart from the blood of Jesus Christ or to pr improve your condition before God apart from the blood of Jesus Christ. So when Hebrews 9 talks about how uh, the blood of Christ, which was offered up, he offered himself up without spot through the eternal spirit, his blood can purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Well, the dead works were the works that were done in the holy place to, uh, you know, there was the washing and the cleansings and the offerings that were continually done by the priests, and they represented, they were a picture of the fact that their conscience had not been perfected, and they did not have a way into the holiest of all. The living God is in the holiest of all, okay? And the blood brings you into the holiest of all. And they didn't even have the right to go in, the priests. Um, the high priest could go in. And that was a figure of a good things to come for us. It was a picture. Uh, and it says that as long as the holy place stood, the way into the holiest had not yet been made manifest. And the holy place was full of washings and carnal ordinances and works that were dead. They didn't bring you into the presence of God and they didn't perfect your conscience. The only thing that we're told can perfect the conscience is the blood of Jesus Christ. It is faith in the blood that establishes peace between me and the living God and brings me into the presence of God. You cannot come into God's presence without an offering. And our offering is faith in the blood. So if you're like you know, Mother Teresa did all kinds of good works uh, in a meritorious way. I mean, yes, she was helping people, but she thought that they added to her merit and hopefully uh, gained her a position before God. And that was the theology. So it springs from unbelief. It's works that spring from unbelief because you don't believe that the blood satisfies God and that you could theoretically do nothing and still be pleasing to God. You feel like you have to do something to please God. No, we're accepted in the beloved for his sake uh, based on the blood. So the blood brings us into the presence of the living God and in type, the there was nothing to do in the Holy of Holies. You couldn't do anything. There were no works. You stood before the presence of God, and God was the active one. Uh, the high priest stood before the presence of God. God was the active one, and the inter the high priest could intercede. You know, um, but there were no dead works in there. Okay, because we talk about rest. Okay, we talk about satisfying our conscience before God by faith in the blood and nothing else, people say, well, you're just telling people not to do anything. Just like they told Paul, you're just looking for a license to sin. It's just an accusation. Um, but dead works come from this unsatisfied conscience because of unbelief. So what's the difference between that and good works? You say, well, good works are good things I do as a Christian. Not necessarily. Uh, it depends on anything that is not a faith is sin. Okay, and faith is the faith in the blood that that assures my heart before God, satisfies me that He's satisfied with me, and even pleased with me. See, that's the base, and what that produces is a, is a thankful heart. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to do anything. Thank you that you did it all. Thank you that you reconciled me to yourself through the blood and I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ and I have access by faith into this grace in which I now stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God 
I rejoice in the hope of glory, and it's coming to me not because I've done anything, but because I believe in the blood. To him who works not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted to him as righteousness, and that righteousness puts me in a blessed state. God has forgiven all my sins and made me an heir of the world to come. That's the great salvation that we've received. Uh, I'm going to reign with him as a king and a priest, and it's a free gift. It, there's no debt on me at all. I don't have to do anything. Praise God. Okay. Now that kind of heart is a heart of faith, full assurance of faith, and it has a note of joy in it. Now, guess what? Anything I do in that state is a good work. If you've got that kind of heart, everything you do is a good work. See, we want to separate our life from our works and say, well, here I was just living, there I was doing a good work. Why do you have that kind of distinction? Because you don't think that your life has any value before God. And you don't think you don't see that Christ is in your life. And that for you to live is Christ. And that, you know, you've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, you live. Yet, not you, but Christ in you. Uh, you think that your life and Christ are something different. And so you go, well, I'll do good works. And then that'll be for Christ. But when I'm just doing my thing, that's not good works. No. Everything you do in faith is good works. Martin Luther taught on that uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, that that you could be washing dishes and it's good works. You could take care of your kids. It's good works. You could be going to work. It's good works. It's all about the condition and the atmosphere of your heart. Is it full of faith and thanksgiving? If it's not full of faith and thanksgiving and you are in unbelief, and you are under condemnation, and you are uh, wondering if God loves you, you know, then you try to satisfy that by something other than believing in the blood. Let's say you go, well, I need to get involved with the homeless ministry. You know, I gotta do something to earn reward. You wanna put God in your debt, as we say. That, those are dead works. That's wood, hay, and stubble. <clears throat> There's no reward for it. In fact, it's sin. Uh, it's reckoned, it, it's counted as sin because it's un, un, in unbelief. Now, are you going to be punished for it? No. You know, it just means that you are not in faith. Anything that's not a faith is sin. Now, so, good works are works that proceed from a heart of faith. And they can be things for others because your nature is different. When you have the fruit of the Spirit, there's a tenderness there uh, for other people and a sympathetic concern that causes you to speak words of comfort and, you know, to give and all, all the things that come out of it. But we don't sit there and measure those things and go, well, how many, how many, how much good works did I did? How many words of comfort did I speak? And write it down and expect a reward. Because Jesus said, when you've done everything you're supposed to do, you're still unprofitable. And those are just things you're supposed to do. You know? Uh, that, And yet Christ is doing them through you and with you if you sanctify the Lord in your heart. That's basically what we're talking about is a living Christ lives in my, and he's making his home in my heart. And I'm being rooted and grounded in love and my heart is full of thanksgiving. My heart is full of faith. Whatever I do out of that is good works. Uh, because if you walk according to the Spirit, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Your flesh is subdued. You're in the Spirit. You're walk That's another way to say it. You're walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is not some mystical thing where you're being really, really good and sanctimonious and holy. No, walking in the Spirit means that your mind is set on the things of the Spirit to agree with what the Spirit bears witness to, which is that you are a child of God and an heir, and that there's no condemnation for you, and that God is for you, and Jesus is your advocate, and he's given you everything. And how shall he not also give you everything with Christ, right? Now there's one other level of good works, which is good works for the testimony. Titus is talking about that. Titus has a lot. He talks about how those who are ours are to maintain good works. And it's interesting, he says those who are ours.
because you say, well, then he's a cult leader. No. But those who are associated with his teaching and doctrine, he wanted to maintain good works. And, and if you read Titus, it's because of the Jewish believers and non-believers who were blaspheming the grace of God and saying it's a license to sin. They were gainsayers, they were blaspheming the word, they were speaking contrary to the truth, and they were bringing reproach against the doctrine of Christ, and the doctrine of grace. And so he's like, we want to show them that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Uh, and it does make us zealous for good works, and it does make us uh, a holy people. The grace of God accomplishes what the law could not. And so Paul was very interested in the churches uh, manifesting things that would bring credit to the ministry and to the doctrine. That's why he was so eager to raise up an offering for Jerusalem and he posted among the churches and he was so disappointed when Corinth had promised so much and then when it came time they didn't have any money for Titus you know they had to remind them they were boasters good works people who really emphasize on it from a from the sense of a dead works perspective of an evil conscience of unbelief an evil heart of unbelief they boast a lot about the good works that they never do it's amazing and they're the first ones to say, oh yeah, we're going to raise up this and do that and do this. And then when it's time, the road meets the road, they're gone. And where are they? You know. Uh, but it's interesting, the grace, uh, we don't boast because we know we can't do anything. And yet God provides abundantly for us surprising in surprising ways. And we end up doing way more than we ever thought we did we could do you know I I was I did a message last year about the more I talk about rest the more I work I can't believe how much I've done in the last two years especially now that I know I have sleep apnea I'm so tired and yet I, I the Lord has given me the grace to keep doing things and writing and it doesn't matter I'm busy you know uh, and I'm not doing those things to earn any credit I'm not doing any things to win any favor or to satisfy my conscience. I do it because I love what I see in the Word and I want to share it with people. You know, period. And I love it enough that I want to contend for it. I'm willing to take, you know, a certain amount of insults and whatever, and that's not going to deter me. Um, so there are good works. There are things we do for the testimony. Hudson Taylor... Did an, uh, he raised up an orphanage not because he thought that that would make him a better Christian and he didn't even do it first and foremost for the orphans what he did it for was because he knew God provided all his needs and there were so many Christian workers and missionaries that were begging for money and compromising their doctrine in order to be accepted by the institutional churches because of their financial need and he wanted to show them all that he could do an orphanage and God would supply all his needs and he wouldn't raise any money. And he kept a journal of all the miracles and answered prayer that God did. Uh, his autobiographies, all these miracle, miraculous provision of God. He did it for a testimony. So there are good works that adorn the gospel. Like Peter said, you know, that they may behold your good works and glorify God in the day of visitation. But these are people who speak evil of you. And it's the same thing with Titus. It is to shut the mouth of evil speakers and slanderers. It is not to satisfy your conscience or to put you in a better position before God. And they have to be, you know, it, they're only worthy of anything if they're done out of a heart full of faith and thanksgiving. So that's the difference between dead works and good works. Dead works are from a heart of unbelief to try to secure God's favor or put him in your debt to work for a wage to deal with your guilties and make you feel like a better person or make you look like a better person. But good works are anything that's done while my heart is at rest because my conscience is satisfied with the blood and I'm in the Holy of Holies serving in the Spirit and the living God. And and yes, when we walk in the Spirit, sometimes we, st we still, it's not like we're not going to sin and stuff like that. Uh, all 
all of our works are tainted with the corruption of the flesh. But God edits the record, so to speak, you know. Um, but your living is a good work if you have a heart of thanksgiving and faith. What if you're bedridden? People think that's an, that's, that is an exaggerated extreme that I'm using when I talk about bedridden people who can't do anything, and yet their heart is a garden to the Lord, and they're pleasing to God, and they're full of fruit. They say, no, that's just an extreme example. That, you know, there's, that's not, there's, a, no, a, a big percentage of the people who faithfully subscribe to me and listen to me and receive the most help are bedridden. They are. I, I cannot believe how many people are sick in bed and can't do anything and, and were plagued in their conscience because the, uh, the religious system said, no, you're supposed to be up working if you really believe God, blah, 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 you know. And now they're entering rest and they've got joy in their heart. And their heart is a garden before the Lord. And they're bearing fruit, full of thanksgiving. So it's not about what you do, it's about your the condition of your heart. It really is. Uh, faith, hope, and love are the things that abide. Those are the incorruptible materials, really, that, that make it through uh, the fire, so to speak. And remain in our and our our reward, and the people that are affected by it, by our faith, love, and hope. Okay, I gotta go pick up this machine, and I'll talk to you later.